Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina wa habibina wa shafi'ina wa qa'idina wa qurrati aynina sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Allahumma aftah alayna kutuh al-arifin. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana ya arhamar rahimin. Today insha'Allah. We will start our session by talking about Fatima to Zahra, the lady of paradise. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Fatima radiyallahu anha, Ya bunayya, ama tardayna annaki sayyidatu nisa'i al-alameen? Oh my daughter, won't you be satisfied if you know that you are the lady of the all all women so this is our female companion today a sayyida fatima radiyallahu anha she was the fourth of the daughters of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Her mom is Ummul Mu'mineen Khadija al-Kubra bintu Huwaylid radiyallahu anha. She was born uh, when her father was 35 years old. And that was um, a few years before Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was revealed to. When she was born, her father got so many uh, happy feelings. He got so many glad tidings. So he, he knew that this baby would be special. And he named her Fatima. And her nickname was Az Zahra. And that's why we say Fatima to Zahra, radiallahu anha. He also gave her the, another nickname, which was Ummu Abiha. So, what was, so, so the name, this uh, nickname indicates that she was the mother of her father. How, how can this happen? Ummu Abiha means that she was so similar to her father. So she used to walk like him, to talk like him. She was like Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Fatima radiallahu anha was born to a prophetic house and she got a lot of care, a lot of attention, a lot of directions from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she got the characteristics, the good characteristics of her, of her mother, radiallahu anha, Sayyida Khadija. So she was brought up as a, a, a great companion as a, uh, an amazing uh, female companion who used to love khair for everyone, who got the good manners of her father. Her father to her was a model. She, she used to, to imitate him in almost everything. And Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha, she was asked, Who of the people was most liked by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And she answered, Fatima min qibali nisa'i Fatima. From the woman, from the woman, uh, she was Fatima. And from the men, her father, uh, sorry, her husband, her husband. Okay, so she was the most loved of the woman to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
and from the man her husband Sayyidna Ali radiyallahu anha anhuma. So when Fatima would be uh, in the house, she would fill the house with joy, with happiness. Uh, she was very alert. She was very smart. Uh, she was uh, always trying to imitate her father and her mother. And she was trying to, uh, um, to, to, to get the, the best manners from them. So Fatima radiallahu anha was the closest to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amongst her, her sisters. And uh, as we said, she was uh, so similar to her uh, father in the way she walks, in the way she turns, in the way she talks, uh, in the way of her relationship to others around her and almost everything. So she was the most loved of the household to her father. When he would see her, he would feel happy. And as a child, he used to hold her, to carry her, to kiss her. And when she was five years old, the big change happened to her father. And that was when he was revealed too by Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam. And, uh, and that was the, uh, the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to receive this mission to convey Islam to everyone. And of course, that was in stages. So uh, Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu anha was with her father, supporting her father, especially that the house was empty now because her sisters Zainab, Umm Kulthum, and Ruqiyah got married. So she was the one who was with her father attending and witnessing all the events. She, she would uh, accompany her father, she would go with her father, with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and uh, her cousin Ali radiallahu an uh, was also with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was four years older than Fatima radiallahu anha. And we all know that Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an used to live in the house of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the story, how he, how he ended in the house of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, it, was, it was very uh, bad uh, drought that happened. And uh, Quraysh had a very tough time. So Abu Talib, his father was had so many children. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to his uncle Al-Abbas, to the brother of Abu Talib, and, and Al-Abbas was, um, was rich. So he said to him, Oam, ya amma, let's go to uh, your brother, Abu Talib, and take two of his sons so I can raise one, you can raise one, and that would make it a little easy for, for, uh, for him for, uh, in, in, in this difficult time. So Al-Abbas said yes, and they, they both go to Abu Talib, and they told him, we wanted to, uh, to just to help you uh, until uh, this problem uh, is uh, over. So we want to take two of your sons. One would live with me. One would live with, uh, um, with my, um, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, until uh, the problem ends. So they took... Uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took Ali radiallahu anhu and he was the youngest of Abi Talib's children and 
Al-Abbas, the uncle, took Ja'far radiallahu an, and Ja'far was 10 years older than Ali radiallahu an. So Ali radiallahu an was with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, since he was young until Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was revealed to and had the message and he was of uh, the first three uh, male people who became Muslims. So Ali and Fatima uh, lived in the household of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, uh, he took, Sayyidina Ali, he took all the uh, good characteristics of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He learned a lot from Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took very good care of him also. So Fatima radiallahu anha, as we just mentioned, although she was, she was young, she was living all the incidents with her father and uh, of course, that, uh, that was so difficult to see how Quraysh are uh, uh, any hurting her father, how Quraysh are hurting the Muslims. One day she was watching her father from a distance and he was at, the Kaaba praying and he was uh, doing his sujood when Uqba ibn Abi Ma'ir got some dirt of uh, the camels and he put it on the head of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was praying when he was doing the sujood so Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not raise up his his head until Fatima radiallahu anha came rushing to her father so she uh, cleaned him she took, she took all that dirt out and cleaned him and when he, when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, raised his head he said Allahumma alayka al mala'a min Quraysh اللهم عليك أبا جهل ابن هشام وعتبة ابن ربيعة وشيبة ابن ربيعة وعقبة ابن أبي معيط وأبي بن خلف. So having heard this this uh, dua against them, they 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 got scared, and uh, uh, they 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 trembled because they knew that. Allah will fulfill the dua for him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered that dua. All of them, all of them were killed on the day of Badr, on the battle of Badr. So that was when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ uh, Deliver the message to your, uh, to your uh, closest kinship. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam later on uh, 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 he, he, he uh, called in Quraysh and he said Ya ma'ashara Quraysh ishtaru anfusakum O people of Quraysh save yourselves I'm not going to save anyone I'm not going to save Al-Abbas. I'm not going to save Safiya. I'm not going to save Fatima bin to Muhammad. I'm not going to save anyone. You have to work for yourself. So at that time when, when Fatima radiallahu anha heard her name, how she was specified in that, in that speech, she, was, she felt very, very close. She felt, she felt that there is something special for her. And as we mentioned, Fatima radiallahu anha witnessed a lot of the plottings of the non-believers against her father and against the Muslims. And she was trying to support him as much as she could, even though she was, she was young. And we know that after the... Uh, the, this it's so much torture. The Quraysh decided to to boycott the Muslims in Sharb ibn Abi Talib in a special uh, area, and uh, they they uh, 
would not sell them any food they would not allow anything to get to them they would it was it was a very bad boycott against the muslims not only the muslims but even even the um the people of Quraysh, those of them who were of Bani Hashim and who were not even Muslims, they got into there just supporting the Muslims, their tribe. So it was a very bad test for the Muslims. When it when that when that test ended when everything went back to normal. Uh, Sayyidina Khadija, Ummul Mu'mineen, radiyallahu anha, the mother of the believers, she was very sick. And she, she died soon after uh, these, these things were cleared. So Ali ibn Abi Talib would get into the house, into the into the uh, room where Khadija radiallahu anha is uh, uh, breathing her last breath. He would look at her and he would feel how his heart is uh, aching because she was a very good mother for him. She was a very good, she gave him a lot of care. She, she took amazing care of him. Is she going to die? Is she going to, to, to uh, is, is he not going to see her again in this world? And he was crying. And as Zahra was crying. So Khadija Allahu anha passed away at a time when Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha was the clothes that was in so massive need for her mother. She was still young. And she was looking at her father and seeing how sad he was for, for the death of his of his wife. And not and very shortly, his uncle also passed away. And his uncle was his support. He was preventing Quraysh from hurting Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And time passed by. And Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha uh, witnessed what happened to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the people of Ta'if. How, how badly they treated him. And a little later after that, she witnessed the journey of Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, what happened to her father, how Quraysh um, uh, stood, some of them belying him, some of them accepting it. And Al-Zahra radiallahu anha, with all that was standing next to her father. She was patient. She was so faithful. She was full of Iman. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the permission to the companions to migrate from Mecca to Medina. And they left. And a little bit later, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given the uh, permission to migrate to Medina. So, who was to stay in Mecca and pay the uh, amanas back to the people of Quraysh? It was Sayyidina Ali. He ransomed himself for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he slept in his bed that night. So he would, uh, he would, uh, so Quraysh would think that Muhammad is still in his bed sleeping. They were watching him. They were surrounding the house. 
one one uh, uh, person from each tribe so that when he gets out of the house they would kill him and his blood would be amongst all the all the tribes so they, no no revenge would be taken take him from them but it was a big surprise for them to to discover that Ali ibn Abi Talib was the one sleeping in the bed of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had left Mecca. So Ali ibn Abi Talib stayed in Mecca three days. He gave the amana to the amanas that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, used to have to the people of Quraysh. And Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha and Umm Kulthum and a little bit of the some, some women in Mecca, they stayed in Mecca and until Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, sent some people to uh, to get to them to Medina. So when they were, when they reached Medina, the people, the ladies of Al Ansar, welcomed them so happily, and they they stayed. Now they are in. Um, they are now in Medina with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Fatima radiallahu anha met her father again. At that time, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, uh, got married to Aisha radiallahu anha uh, and uh, Fatima was about 18 years old and she received so many suitors. Abu Bakr radiallahu an uh, proposed to her. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an proposed to her. But Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam apologized nicely. And a little later, Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib proposed to uh, Fatima radiallahu an. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Listen to him, and Ali said to Sayyidina Muhammad, "Aradtu an akhtiba ila Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam abnatahu Fatima." So he was saying, uh, "This is what, uh, the narration of Sayyidina Ali that he wanted to propose to the daughter of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam." So he said to himself, "Wallahi ma li min shay. I don't own anything." ثُمَّ ذَكَرْتُ صِلَتَهُ then I remembered that I am so close to him. I was raised by him. So I went to Sayyidina Muhammad and I told him, I want to propose. I'm proposing to Fatima radiallahu anha. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, do you own anything? Do you have anything? So he said, no, Ya Rasulullah, I don't, ha I don't have anything to give as a dowry. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reminded him, where is فَأَيْنَ دَرْعُكَ الْخَطِيمَةَ الَّتِي أَعْطَيْتُكَ يَوْمَ كَذَا وَكَذَا Where is your shield that I gave you on so and so day? He said, I have it, Ya Rasulullah. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this should be the dowry. And Ali radiallahu anhu went quickly and brought that shield. So Sayyidina Muhammad asked him to sell it and to pay for the bride. Who bought that shield? Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu He bought it for 470 dirham. So Ali radiallahu anhu gave the 
money to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave some to Bilal radiallahu an to buy some atr and some perfumes. And he gave the rest to Umm Salama so she would prepare uh, Fatima radiallahu anha, the bride. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called his companions and he invited them and he uh, uh, talked to them about this marriage that they witnessed the marriage from uh, uh, between Fatima and Ali radiallahu an and he said he 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 uh, said the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them that the dowry was 400 uh, dirham and he ended this uh, the, uh, the talk with uh, Mubaraka, with the congratulations for the uh, bride and the groom. And he uh, made dua that they would get the, uh, the best uh, uh, of the children and uh, grandchildren. So... Fatima radiallahu anha got married to the brave Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. And uh, when the wedding uh, finished, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, said to Ali, uh, you, uh, you, you will be in your home. I am going for the prayer and come back to, to wait for me. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to the mosque, prayed the Isha, and when he came back, he uh, uh, went to the house of Sayyidina Ali Radiallahu An. So he uh, ordered some water, he made wudu, and then he, he uh, uh, spread uh, uh, that uh, he, uh, water on Sayyida Fatima wa Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an, and he said, Allahumma barik fihima wa barik alayhima wa barik fi naslihima. Uh, oh Allah, bless them, bl uh, give them barakah, and uh, give the barakah to their children and uh, their offsprings. One day, Umm al-Fadl, the wife of al-Abbas, his uncle, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So one day, Umm al-Fadl, radiallahu anha, woke up and she had uh, a dream that she um, was scared of. She thought of telling Sayyidina Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, about the dream that she saw uh, one limb, uh, one part of his limbs uh, being um, thrown into her house. And that scared her. So, so then she decided not to tell him. And the dream never, never uh, left her. So she was always thinking about this dream. She tried to forget it, but no way. So she went to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she said, Ya Rasulullah, ra'aytu udwan min a'daika fi bayti. Oh, Messenger of Allah, I saw one of your limbs in my house. And then she felt so, so uh, much at ease after she said what she said. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at her and he was smiling and he said, Oh, this is a very nice dream, Umm al-Fadl. And this means that Fatima, radiallahu anha, would give birth to a, to a, to a boy, to a baby boy, and you, you, will, uh, you will be feeding this boy, you will be nursing this boy. And subhanAllah, it was the 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 uh, soon enough that Fatima radiallahu anha was pregnant, and Sayyidina Ali was waiting for his uh, first baby. So when it was time, uh, the baby was born, and 
they brought him to uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he ordered a white, uh, a white cloth. So he wrapped him with, and he cut the cord for him. And he made dua, Allahumma inni u'izuhu bika wa waladahu min ash-shaytani rajim Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you for for this uh, for this baby and his children from uh, the outcast of Shaitan, mean as Shaitan Rajim. So on the seventh day after the baby was born, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to him and he said, "Tell me, what did you name him?" So Ali radiallahu anhu said, we named him Harb. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Bal huwa Hassan. No, his name is Hassan. And he, he slaughtered uh, a sheep. And uh, he uh, asked Fatima radiallahu anha to shave his head and to pay sadaqa with the uh, oh, uh, as much as the hair would weigh. So the weight of the hair, they, that would be uh, uh, weighed with uh, silver and how much that uh, would worth, then it would be a sadaqa for the baby. And this is a lesson for us. When we have a baby on the seventh day, uh, we um, shave the hair, slaughter the sheep, and we pay the sadaqa for the for the uh, baby uh, with as much uh, how much the hair weighed. We paid sadaqa in uh, fadda or the equivalent, and after. That the Battle of Uhud took place, and Al Zahra was uh, with the woman who went out with uh, the army to support the army, to serve uh, the uh, injured, to uh, to pass water. So she she uh, she was at the battle of Uhud and what happened. She saw her father and what happened to him, how he was bleeding and, uh, and uh, uh, what happened to him. And she rushed and she helped Ali ibn Abi Talib uh, uh, so to, to wash the face, the blessed face of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One year, one month, sorry, one month later, Fatima radiallahu anha was pregnant again. And when Al Hassan, her first baby, was about one year old, um, Al Hussein was born. And uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah of Surah Al-Ahzab, ayah 33, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجِسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, with his wife, Ummu Salama. So he ordered Ali wa Fatima wa Hassan wa Hussein and he covered them with, uh, with a cover, with a kisa. And he said, Allahumma ha'ulai ahla bayti, Allahumma fa'adhib anhum al-rishsa wa tahirhum tathira. So what's the ayah? Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, said, innama yuridu Allahu liyudhib ankum al-rishsa ahla al-bayt. So Allah intends only to remove from you the impurity of sin, O people of the Prophet's household. So this is why Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called them Ali and Fatima and Hassan al-Hussein and 
he made that dua for them. Oh Allah, those are the people of my household. So purify them with your extensive purification. Again, later on the fifth year of Hijra, Fatima radiallahu anha got her third baby. She was a beautiful um, uh, daughter her, and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam named her Zainab. And two years later, uh, Az-Zahra radiallahu anha gave another birth to another daughter and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam named her Umm Kulthum. So the names of his daughters was renewed with the birth uh, of uh, Fatima uh, who, uh, with, uh, when she gave birth to those two, uh, uh, two baby girls. As we mentioned, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to love Fatima Radiallahu Anha a lot. Whenever she would come in, he would stand up, he would kiss her, and he would ask her to sit in his place. And he loved her a lot. But even though he wouldn't accept for his family, for his household, that they would live uh, an extravagant life. Life, while other Muslims are so poor. So when Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha came one day uh, to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam complaining of the uh, painful uh, pain, pain when she gets from grinding uh, the wheat uh, and uh, she was holding water to the house so she asked for a servant, but Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, كَيْفَ تَطْمَعُونَ فِي شَيْءٍ مِنْ هَذَا وَأَهْلُ الصُّفَّةِ عَلَى مَا هُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْفَقْرِ How would you look into this while the people of Sufa are so poor? So what did he, what did, what did he uh, do instead? So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to the house of uh, Az-Zahra radiallahu anha and he told her and her husband Ali radiallahu anha Ala ukhbirukuma bi khayri ma sa'altumani Would I tell you what is better than what you have asked me for? They said yes ya Rasulullah Faqal kalimatun allamni hinna Jibreel تسبحان في دبر كل صلاة عشرة وتحمدان عشرة وتكبران عشرة. So after each prayer, you do سبحان الله ten times, الحمد لله ten times, الله أكبر ten times. And when you get uh, uh, into your bed, say سبحان الله thirty three times. Alhamdulillah, 33 times. Allahu Akbar, 33 times. That would be more helpful to you than what you asked for, than the servant you asked for. So Sayyidina Ali said, I never, I never, ever left this, uh, uh, this tasbih after Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi alayhi wa sallam, has taught me that. So, Fatima radiallahu anha has witnessed a lot of things, a lot of incidents since she was very young. Her mom passed away when, when she was still young. Her sister Ruqiya passed away. Her Sister Zainab uh, uh, in, in the ninth year of Hijrah, her sister Umm Kulthum passed away. So imagine, 
she witnessed the death of all of her mom and her three her, her three uh, sisters but the 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 daughter the uh, the, this amazing daughter who was raised by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam would never surrender to sorrow, would never get depressed. But she was an example of the young daughter, of the young girl who was patient and who was so full of faith and iman. She accepted everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given her. But her last test was so difficult. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got sick. Everyone thought that it would be, it's just uh, a normal sickness and uh, he would get uh, better. But Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in bed and Fatima uh, anha, was with Aisha radiallahu anha uh, taking care of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so Umm al the mother of the believers Aisha radiallahu anha said that she narrated uh, the wives, uh, all the wives of Sayyidina Muhammad uh, were uh, in the room. None of them uh, was absent. Fatima radiallahu anha come, came into the room. And the way she walked was exactly the way her father walked. Sayyidina Muhammad walked. So when he saw her coming into the room, he welcomed her and he said, Marhaban ya bunayati. So he, he asked her to sit beside him. And he was very sick. She was, she was sad to see her father in this condition. So he, he whispered into her, into her ear uh, a few words that she died, she, she cried. Then he whispered again and she laughed. And when she uh, uh, walked away, uh, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha said to her, oh Fatima, the messenger of Allah has given you a secret and you were uh, crying then he gave you another secret and you were uh, laughing. Could you tell me what made you laugh and what made you cry? And Fatima said, I would never reveal the secret of uh, the messenger of Allah. So Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha kept it in her, uh, with her, she wanted to know. So when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away uh, soon, uh, she, she told, she asked her again, I, I ask you, please tell me what, what happened? What did he tell you? And Fatima radiallahu anha said to her, now that he passed away, I will tell you. And the, the first time when he talked to me, he said, جبريل كان يعارضني بالقرآن كل سنة مرة وأنه عارضني عارضني العام في هذه السنة مرتين وإني لا أحسب ذلك إلا عند اقتراب أجلي فاتق الله واصبري فنعم السلف لك أنا So he said to her every year Jibril would would uh, review the Quran with me once, but this year he did it twice, and I, I, I know that this is, uh, this means death. So, be uh, patient. Ittaqillah. Be a good Muslim, and be patient. I am the best. 
to you. And when he saw me cry, so when he saw me crying, he said to me, أما ترضين أن تكوني سيدة نساء العالمين؟ Won't you be happy to be the lady of all women? And he told her, you are the first who will follow me, who will die, the first of my family to die. And that's why she laughed. Subhanallah. So she was uh, she was very sad to the death of her father. And when they buried him, she said to Anas, Ya Anas, كيف طابت أنفسكم أن تحثوا التراب على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم? How how could you put the dirt on top of him? The 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 how how could you do that? Uh, the uh, the soil on him. And she cried. But of course. Uh, everyone remembered the uh, ayah uh, 144 of Surah Ali Imran. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلِ Muhammad is but a messenger. Other messengers have passed on before him. So messengers die also. They are not eternal. They won't be eternal. وَمَا جَعَلْنَا لِبَشَرٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِكَ الْخُلْدَ أَفَئِمْ مِتَّ فَهُمُ الْخَالِدُونَ And that was in Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayah 34. We, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we did not grant to any man before you eternity on earth. So if you die, would they be eternal? Everyone is dying. So just be alert, O Muslims. People are heedless. When they die, they would they would remember, oh, they would be alert. But that's it. There are no more chances to, to make up what they missed. So just take chances take advantage of all the chances that you still have in this dunya get closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get closer to sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam get closer to the quran perform your prayers do everything that sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has ordered us to do that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to do and be away, abstain from everything that Allah and his messenger wanted us to abstain from. There's still time. Use this time. So Fatima radiallahu anha, it was just about uh, six months later that Fatima radiallahu anha uh, also passed away. And Al Hassan, Al Hussein, Umm Kulthum, and Zainab, they were very saddened for the death of Fatima. Radiallahu anha. So, an amazing person, Rahimallahu Fatima Al Zahra. May Allah have mercy on her. She was Ummu Abiha, the mom of her father. She resembled Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the most. She was the she's the lady of the people of Jannah. She is Rayhana to Sayyidi Waladi Adam. She is the wife of uh, the bravest uh, man, Ali radiallahu an. She is the mother of Al Hassan, the mother of, of Al Hussein, the mother of Zainab, the mother of Umm Kulthum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us with them, with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with his family, with, with his offsprings in the highest maqams of al-firdaus al-a'la.
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make those amazing female companions our model, the model for our children. So, so that we can raise our children to be like them. So they would be coolness of an eye to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Until we meet next week, I send my salam to Sayyidina Muhammad and your salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.